woke up this morning, not used to this feeling. There's nothing standing in my way no more. The sun is still breathing, the sea is bleeding. Rock City Networks and The Push bringing you some exclusive interviews from Face the Music 2010 here at the Arts Centre in Melbourne. And uh, joining me, Frank Verasso from Verasso PR. How are you, mate? Good, Ben. How are you? I'm uh, I'm good. It's it's the start of a it's the start of a very big weekend here at the Face the Music conference. How uh, how are you feeling? Uh, you've got a, you've got a few things on. You've got musical chess and uh... yeah, I've got uh, musical chess and uh, an artist development yeah. at, uh, uh, session um, and also a uh, never uh, out of the box, which yeah. is like a listening. Uh, song appraisal kind of uh, discussion, yeah. I believe. So it's good, but no, everything's great. I'm feeling great. I'm looking forward to it. It's face to music uh, is, um, you know, really integral part of the uh, the music industry, and um, so it's always a pleasure to be a part of it. Mm. Now, Frank, uh, for for anybody out there that doesn't know of you or know know what you do, could you uh, just take us through a little bit of Verasso PR and what that involves? Sure. Um, well. Basically, uh, I, I started off at Warner Music um, about 20 years ago and uh, ran the uh, promo department uh, in Victoria uh, for that and then moved to EMI where I um, worked as a promotions manager there and then became the national publicity manager um, for EMI for a few years and then went to um, Festival Mushroom uh, as general manager of promotions and publicity and then uh, from Festival Mushroom over to Sony Music, so I've been done a bit of a, four, I've yeah. done <laughs> done uh, a couple of biggies, yeah, yeah which yeah. is good, and I then decided to um, venture out alone and, and do um, uh, my own promotion and publicity company because what I found was that uh, artists nowadays um, really need uh, someone they can talk to about how to go to radio um, and, and how to uh, develop their careers. So um, Verasso PR is... Um, pretty multifaceted company in the sense that I I do radio plugging uh, and video plugging and that means you know taking uh, artists songs to radio uh, and trying to get airplay and video play. Um, Verasso PR also has a consultancy service where I can talk to, to young bands and managers about where their bands are headed and uh, what directions to take mm -hmm. um, uh, whether that be you know sourcing you know a uh, and development sourcing um, publish uh, publishing deals or or even just you know just general feedback on you know how to get onto um, uh, onto shows and, and get a booking agent all those sorts of things so it's a, a developmental sort of thing I've also got a song appraisal service where we um, we listen to to new tracks before they go to radio and and offer pretty in-depth advice as to you know how strong the song is, where it sits uh, in radio land, um, and uh, and you know on top of that we um, we also uh, you know I guess sort of help bands sort of take the next step so to speak. It's mm -hmm. it's more a um, uh, a company that allows people to. Um, uh, to take their music to another level, I yeah. guess, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, and with all of that, that that you've just explained, I would imagine that sometimes it's quite a hard job and, and a hard thing to, to give that feedback because not a lot of the time the artist would be expecting the answer that they're going to receive, and, and you have to do that. As a, as, a, as a business, you have to be straight down the line. Well, that's it, you know. The, th the thing is that it's not so much, you know, it, you're right, Ben, it's, it's really hard to tell a band that, look, you know, the song doesn't cut it um, for commercial radio, um, but, you know, that, that shouldn't be the end of the line. You know, there are, you know, there are a lot of songs that can be changed or... Um, rearranged or re-recorded or produced in a better manner that um, will give the chance a better uh, will give the song a better chance at radio um, the you know it is hard but again you know in, in a lot of ways when you're a radio plugger and you're taking songs to radio you need to one believe in the song and two you know you need to be honest with the band because if you you know it's quite easy for me to tell a band what they think um, or what they want to want to believe um, and that really defeats the purpose because if I'm not uh, being upfront and honest then I can't um, we can't be progressive and move forward you know if there's an issue let's deal with it work a way around it and uh, and take it from there rather than just you know feed your garbage and tell you what you want to hear and, and you know at, at the end of the day when it doesn't get played then you know who's to blame yeah so in essence you know we, we sort of um, we play the hand of God if you know what I mean we, we sort of Need to be honest and upfront, and and you know uh, guide the band in the right direction rather than lead them astray and, and 
you know, falsify everything, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, well, and that's exactly why you're on the uh, the panel for out out of the box. is It's a very interesting concept. It's from what I from what I've read, artists uh, uh, submit their music, and, Correct. and, and yeah. you, uh, you you give a you give feedback, critique, so yeah. forth uh, after a thirty second to a minute sort of preview. Yeah, which uh, you know I'd like more than thirty seconds, but you know, um, as long as the hooks in there, that, that's the most important thing. And look, you know, I mean. This is how radio listen to songs, you know, they, they usually go to the hook of the song and if it's a big enough hook then uh, they'll commit to, to considering it for airplay. Um, and it's, look, it's a really important part of my business too, I do it on a regular basis but I, you know, obviously I do a more in-depth analysis of the song. Um, but um, it's important because at the end of the day, um, if a band's going to succeed, it, it's purely based upon it. The song, you know, yeah. if you don't have the songs, you're right, you're going to struggle. Yeah, yeah, you know. Now, um, and also you've got uh, you've got musical chess, I believe. That's yeah, which is like an artist development sort of uh, strategy, uh, and that's sort of um, based upon you know uh, having uh, a band yeah. and uh, and how you move forward from you know getting a booking agent, getting live shows, taking songs to radio, rehearsing, publicity, promotion all that sort of stuff. So um, that's the most interesting session for me because that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, it'll be fun working with um, uh, Kath Harity and, and the team that she's assembled because um, a few of us have worked together on a number of different projects. So uh, it's a really good opportunity for bands to sort of see, you know, how to go about releasing a song yeah. uh, from you know, recording all the way through to releasing it as a single and everything in between, which is obviously, you know, your interviews, your um, your promotion and publicity of the song and, and, and all that sort of stuff, so. Yeah, it must be very interesting for everybody involved in these panels, especially because, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with your work, it's business, 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 and, and there are points where you can't sort of go out there and play a little bit and experiment, but I guess these things where you have these panels together, you, you, it's more open-ended and you're allowed to, with yeah. your peers, sort of experiment a little bit more and, and work on ideas that, uh, that you normally wouldn't be allowed to, or yeah. not allowed to, but just don't have the time to do during, during yeah. your normal working hours. Well, yeah, well it's, it's interesting you mention that, Ben, because um, you know, that in itself is a really important aspect of the panel, because mm -hmm. the fact that you've got you know, four or five people sitting in and talking about this hypothetical band, um, that's exactly what, what happens in the outside world. It's not, you know, um, I don't go out there and, and plug a song um, uh, or, and a video on my own, you know, without any other support. You know, you need to have, every band or artist needs to have a support network around them. So, for example, um, you know, I've worked with Heidi uh, Braithwaite, I've worked with um, with Kath Harity on bands, and we're always talking about, okay, what's the plan? Let's develop a marketing plan, a strategy that we can take um, a particular track to radio and TV. So, you know, we're always liaising uh, with the pub. I'm always liaising with the publicist and with the manager um, and booking agent if necessary, and, and working out, you know, a really good strategy so that, um, you know, uh, we have a domino effect. You know, when you've got all the pieces, uh, it's great. But if you're trying to do things on your own, it's just not going to work. You just need bands need to have activity happening around them, whether it be a publicist, a promoter, uh, a plugger. Um, a manager, all those things need to be in place before you can go. You can't simply just go to radio yeah. um, and expect things to happen. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's a very interesting concept, especially with people that uh, are more consumers and punters rather than uh, looking inside or, or looking from the inside out. Yeah. And, and once people do realise the, the enormity of what you have to do to become a successful artist, there's so many pieces of the puzzle to put together. And I, I think that's that's a great reason for this, uh, you know, face the music conference. It's uh, and and people like yourself giving giving your time to actually come down and. Um, and, and allowing people to take away your information and your wealth of knowledge, which yeah. is a really good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. I mean, you know, uh, and you're right too, Ben. You know, it is a really, it's a really tough industry. It's um, it's very complicated. It's not as uh, cut and dry as having a great song and then you know putting it on the radio. It's uh, it's extremely complex, and you need you know you need to surround yourself with all the right people before you can make an impact. So. Yeah, you know, Face the Music is um, is a great opportunity for bands to to be well educated in the processes involved. You know, because um, you know, from an educational point of view, there's, there are a lot of bands that you know 
uh, have great music and if they're in, well informed about the processes to take then success you know is certainly going to be within reach excellent excellent now Frank one one, one more final thought uh, I mean everyone's coming here to take away information and and, and your lessons to be yep. taught here what are you looking to take away from face the music well I'm just looking to uh, to connect with a lot of uh, young artists and bands yep. you know um, to hear some great music and, and meet some, um, some you know new young managers um, and to, uh, to perhaps meet some artists as well that have potential because at the end of the day, you know, I'm always um, looking for, you know, new young bands that have got some great songs or, or managers who, uh, who need some help and I'm more than happy to, you know, facilitate, you know, um, their growth in the industry. So it's, you know, it's win-win as far as I'm concerned. It is a win-win here and, uh, and, and it's been a big win having you uh, here to come and do an interview with us, mate. It's the uh, first one of the day. Fantastic. Great. Thanks, Ben. Uh, in, in, enjoy the panels we'll and, uh, and, and we'll see you around soon. Thanks, Thank much. you very much. It's uh, Frank Verasso here at Verasso PR. It's uh, for Rock City Networks and Face the Music 2010.